That's what I'm saying, man. That's why I think turtles can fly. Shut up, Lee. Man, you're missing the points I'm picking up, man. Hey, Adonis, isn't Halloween coming up soon? Yeah, man, what of it? Are you planning to have a Halloween video up? I don't know, man. I just don't know what game to do. Yeah, I know what you mean, bro. It's a man of innocence. Wait, a Halloween special? Now they will know the true curse of darkness. <laughs> the Vampire Queen! Now you guys are cursed. Oh no! Lee! Think it's the game, man. Think it's cursed. No shit. In order to lift the curse of darkness, you need to be the king. I know what I have to do, Lee. Wait! Wait! You don't have to do this. Expecto! No! Don't go! Adonis, wait! No! Don't go! Wait! Don't go! Don't go! Wait, Adonis! Castlevania, The Man of Innocence, released October 21st, 2003 for North America and then later on on June 18, 2013 for the PSN. It's the first Castlevania game on the PS2 and an origin story to the entire series. So basically, there were these two knights who were hot shit, Leon Belmont and Matthias Conclé, and they were also best friends. But, shit changes when Matthias comes back from a battle somewhere in buttfuck Egypt and what do you know? His wife is dead, so Matthias becomes depressed and bedridden. A year passes and it seems good old Leon has been keeping the company number one and undefeated. But then shit really hits the fan when a whole bunch of monsters appear. And see, the deal with the church is that they're way too busy fighting heathens and they want nothing to do with fighting monsters and ban doing so. So Leon goes to them and is all, Yo church, I got some monsters in my domain and they're straight chilling disturbing the peace and shit. You mind if I take care of it, bruh? And the church says, Bruh. Listen, we'll let you know where you can fight them spooks, cool? And Leon listens like a good knight. Later on though, Matthias tells Leon, Yo homie, the monsters out there are straight spawning from a vampire castle up in that forest eternal night. And one more thing, they swept your girl Sarah, man. So Leon of course quits the church and heads straight to the castle to save his girlfriend. What just happened? I felt something strange. You won't be able to leave now. Who's there? Now, don't get so excited. I'm just an old man. I just came to gawk at the man crazy enough to come here. My name is Rinaldo Gandolfi. You can call me Leon, and I will call you Rinaldo. And you can call me Adonis. I had a joke planned for this, but it's not funny anymore. As you wish. Now, please follow me to my cottage. Yeah, that's right, Leon. Follow the mysterious old stalker who spends his time gawking at men in the forest to his cottage. 
No, I don't see anything wrong there. I mean, it's, it's fine. It's a, the fuck is stranger danger? I have unfinished business with Walter Bernhard, the master of this forest. Wait a sec, hold the phone. You telling me Walter's up in these parts? Well, I mean, that would explain why Leon looks so fucking out of it in the main menu. It's okay, buddy. I heard pupils are for pussies anyway. Who fucking needs them, am I right? Your courage astonishes me. I do have a weapon, just not my sword. That belongs to the company, and I left it behind when I gave up my title. I mean, it's only right. That's it! I quit! I'm gonna go fight some fucking monsters without the fucking church! Better leave my sword though, because that belongs to them. Alright? I'm gonna go fight some fucking monsters unarmed! No way, sir! So then Ronaldo gives Leon a whip made from alchemy and buffs up his gauntlet to use magic and shit like that. But who cares about all that hocus pocus brujeria? Let's just play the game already. Ronaldo, thank you. Wait a minute, I forgot to tell you something. The door leading to his throne is guarded by five monsters. So I will need to defeat them first. That's right. That's essentially the test you must pass to fight him. What a bothersome. Yeah, I know what you mean, Leon. I had no idea I would actually have to fight monsters in this castle, too. I was expecting to just go in there, grab Sarah, and get out. But whatever, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Alright, so we finally entered Walter's castle, and we're one step closer to saving Sarah. One thing I do have to point out here is the way the game introduces itself to you. Aside from learning how to do basic stuff like attack and block, the game doesn't really tell you anything else. You need to find out how to do everything in this game on your own. Mom's not holding your hand anymore. You need to go to school by yourself now. In a way, this sort of fits how Leon must feel in this situation. I really like how the game did this because from the moment that the game starts, your hand did a few weapons and basically they say, oh, here's your shit, now go play the game. You need to learn everything else. Even how to bring up your map. And God knows you're going to be abusing the fuck out of that select button because that map is seriously the best advantage you have in this game. All right, sweet. I just found a bloody cape. Let's go equip that shit now. All right, so I just have to open up my menu screen, go to my equip list, and, uh, oh. Uh, to equip, open up the real-time menu with the right analog stick and choose. How else would you do it? See, since the game runs with a fixed camera angle that moves along with what you're doing all the time, they had to do something with the right analog stick, so they just said, Hey, fuck it, you know, you just put the equip button and shit is be different, you know, you'll fuck it. And this is either a really good thing or a really bad thing, depending on how well you adapt to it. I can't tell you how many times I accidentally hit the right stick while in a heated battle, only to use an item I had no intention of using at that time. Or trying to move the camera out of habit, only to again accidentally be brought into the real-time menu and select something I didn't want to do. But, on the other hand, it can be really useful, allowing for quick on-the-spot healing and changing weapons. Also, I would like to note that the order in which the stages can be done is completely up to you. Like Ronaldo said, there are five bosses and that means five levels to go along with them. As you fight more and more monsters, you get more skills and combos to use. As I said before, you're going to be spending a lot of time looking at your map. Reason being is because everything looks the fucking same. The environments are repetitive and they just copy and paste the same room but with different camera angles all throughout the levels. So it's of course very easy to get lost. Which is why you have your trusty map by your side. Although. They should have made the map its own boss character because it feels like it's harder to maneuver the map than it is to actually read it. Inverted controls on the map? Fine. Whatever. I'll live. But throw in some weird tilt controls too? Alright, now you've gone and made an enemy of me. But get ready to study that shit though, because you're going to be running around and mapping a lot. I remember there was I uh, was but, no, but I went to the fucking I'm, I'm like, oh, I have a whip as my weapon. You no, can't you fucking there. like monsters there, but right? I only have a Who needs a save point anyway? I, I mean, this fucking, I, I, I could just, I I could just run through it. Oh, how do you think I am anyway, huh? Like a Bill Alfredo or some shit? I mean, I can't fucking like, I'm off that. Oh, look, it's the blue. I've been there. Oh, I only have a little bit of light. Yeah, look, I can't this go here. The main way to go back. Maybe now I can get to the other. Okay. Other than all that, though, the controls in this game are pretty tight and responsive. The combat feels good. Along with dodging out of the way and blocking attacks, this game's actually very enjoyable and can be very challenging when it wants to be. For the most part though, I have to say, the boss fights in this game are pretty impressive, but I mean, it's a Castlevania game, what do you expect, right? And I thought this would work so well. <laughs> I was careless. 
It was obvious that it wouldn't be so easy. Yeah. God damn it, she got she got me. I knew I wouldn't be that easy. Each one is varied and pretty difficult at times, and it always feels good when you defeat them. Ah, you did well to come back. Ronaldo, please tell me. What is it? About your daughter. I don't know what you've heard, but you don't need to know anymore. <sighs> Very well. I'll tell you. I've heard... enough. Forget everything I just said! No. You're wrong. Jeez, man, just make up your mind already! So basically, Ronaldo's daughter got turned into a vampire and killed off his entire family. And so now he's here trying to see the end of Walter as some sort of revenge. The force of your grief can only make me stronger. Well, I don't know about you, Leon, but that seems like a pretty sad power to have. <laughs> it's not... It's, it's not that funny, though. Aw, <laughs> oh, man, it seems I've reached a dead end. Goddamn waterfall is too powerful for the unbeatable knight Leon fucking Belmont. That's okay. Instead, I think I'll take the more deadly and death-inviting door off to the side. I mean, what can go wrong? Phew. <sighs> well, now that that nightmare is over with, we can finally continue the game. Now might be a good time to mention that sometimes throughout the game, you'll find a door that leads to an optional boss fight with an elemental monster, which, after defeated, grants you that element for your whip. You can also find special items and equipment hidden around the different levels. Finding these items always feels good because they're usually something that can help you just enough to make it through the game a little more comfortably. On that note, I would also like to say that the platforming in this game is a fucking joke! The game has this weird sense of death. That makes you think that the platform is either closer or farther than you think. And in the end, you are always wrong. God damn it, I was so fucking close, it wasn't for your fucking camera angle and shit. Fuck! Okay, this must be Walter's laboratory. Hmm, it looks like some crazy shit went down here. Oh. Well, I mean, come on, what do you expect? Walter cooks meth, that's what he does, you know? But I think he might be pushing it just a little. What with the, maybe the giant fucking stone statue and all? Ah, fuck! Hmm. There's a piece missing. Well, let's see some of Walter's notes. I'm sure we can find something. Okay, so... Meth means death, and E-meth means life. Well, yeah, of course. What else would it mean? What? You don't remember them teaching you that back in 6th grade, along with the basics of fucking heroin? When the teacher taught you to go skag studying? I'm sorry, Miss Crawford! I don't like needles! Okay, so I got the E-stone. Now we just need to fit it in here, and... Hmm, okay, alright, um, hmm, let me see, just, alright, mm, I mean, I ain't no scientist or anything, but that looks like a whole lot of DEATH to me! I'm sorry, I think this may have all been a trap! What's the matter? You have an odd look on your face. Well... About this whip... Were there problems with it? Is there a way to complete it? It's better for you not to think about that. It's impossible by any normal means. But Yeah, so apparently the whip is not complete, and Ronaldo continues to act like a fucking kid about it. Do not think about it! Now then, after you defeat all five bosses, the final area will be open, and Leon pushes on through to save his beloved Sarah. <laughs> what? What the fuck was that? Apparently that block was so powerful it sent Leon spinning faster than the goddamn wheels on the bus. So Walter gives Sarah back to Leon and challenges him to face him on top of the highest point of the castle. After which Leon says, Yeah, fuck that! And returns to Ronaldo with Sarah. Only to then come to the realization that Sarah has been turned into a vampire. Ronaldo tells Leon that the only way to save Sarah from becoming a vampire is to kill the vampire Walter. But to kill the vampire Walter, he would need to sacrifice a vampire soul into the whip so he could become powerful enough to kill a vampire. And who is the only vampire around here? Sarah. So to save Sarah, Leon needs to kill Sarah, to kill Walter, to save Sarah, but she'll be dead. No, yeah, that, that makes fucking perfect sense. I'm just, I'm just gonna go, um, real quick, don't go I'm fucking, just gonna, just gonna go hang myself. Then you find out that Sarah overheard the entire conversation and goes outside to try and kill herself, and Leon tries to stop her. Then Sarah tells Leon to kill her to complete the whip so that the nightmare could not happen to anyone else. 
Leon sees this as the only option and respects Sarah's final wish and sacrifices her to create the legendary whip that will be used in all the other Castlevania games. This scene is actually really powerful because not only does it show the struggle Leon went through to save Sarah only to have to kill her himself, but it also has a huge impact on what else happens for hundreds of years later. So with hate and sorrow in his heart, love on his mind, and Ronaldo's grief in his left arm, Leon heads for the final battle. But you still have to go through a repetitive ass dungeon though, there's no escaping that. Now I just have to mention something here real quick. While in the final dungeon, you come across this puzzle where you get a VI6 tablet that you need to make into an IV4 tablet to put in this here statue to get the Dragon Crest to fight Walter. But to make an IV4 tablet, you need to go ahead and cross the entire fucking dungeon to turn the tablet around, then all the way back to solve the puzzle. What? I mean, fuck! I could even do that. I don't need no weird ass flip contraction for that. See, it's that fucking simple. Well, anyway, you finally go fight the final boss, Walter, and it looks like you just woke him up from a long nap because he's just stumped there in his chair like, oh, oh, shit, he, he finally came. Better just adjust myself here real quick. And uh. After you defeat Walter, Death himself shows up and takes his soul and gives it to M Matthias? So it turns out Matthias was a vampire all along, and later on in the series, he actually becomes Dracula. He asks Leon to join him, but Leon says, Nah, -uh, bro, I ain't no creepy ass vampire, bitch. Matthias then gets really butthurt about you not joining him and decides to command Death to kill Leon. But in the end, Leon wins. It's this moment when Leon swears that the Belmonts will forever fight the knight, and the feud between them that spans all other Castlevania games begins. A fucking fantastic and powerful end to the game, in my opinion. So, all in all, yeah, there were a few problems with the game, but, I mean, it was a very enjoyable game. I had a lot of fun with it. It's actually very well done, aside from all the repetitive stuff and shit. But, I would definitely recommend this game to any Castlevania fan, or if you're not a Castlevania fan too, this is a great game to play. It's just fucking, you know, it's, it's really good. And it's going to help me break my curse, so. <sighs> Finally. The curse of darkness has been lifted. Wait, but why do I still look like this? I don't feel any different. Adonis? Lee? Adonis, that's not the game that's gonna lift the curse. This one is. Of course. How could I have been so blind? It was always the curse of darkness that would break the curse of darkness. This makes no fucking sense. But Donnie, this is it. You have to play this game and finish it before we become vampires forever. How long do we have? Until Halloween. <laughs> Of course! How could I have been so blind? <laughs>